again, symbolism. I want to show you something from the Bible in a second. Symbolism. When I say symbolism, we're talking about the expression of uh, mystical or spiritual ideas through the use of symbols. For example, the arch of Palmyra that is being transported from city to city today. This is, look at it. This is the arch of Palmyra. This led into the temple of Baal. Now they call it Baal. The Bible calls it Baal. Okay, in the English uh, translation of the Hebrew text. It's Baal. So this led into the temple of Baal. Baal is the Babylonian god. I want you to understand this. Baal is the Babylonian god. That the Bible tells you about when you study in the Old Testament. says a lot about Baal. The replica, a replica of this arch is being transported to different, different countries and different cities today. For example, here it is. This is the Arch of Baal replica displayed here. They've taken it to London. They've taken it to New York. All right? The United States. Uh, Spain. It was in Florence. They took it there for the G7 summit. They set it up there. And everywhere they take it, and people are fascinated by it. But what is, what is the message? Don't listen to what they're telling you that, oh, they just, they're just so fascinated by it. They just want people uh, about 50, 50 feet high. That thing there. So, oh, we're just carrying it around. We just want to, it's about history. It's not about history. It's not about history. It's part of the symbolism. What is that? We are ready for what? Babylon. This is what it's about. I said, why, why, did, they, why did those ladies wear purple? Why, why did they choose purple? Because it's part of the cultism. It's part of the cultism. They're saying the time has come. In the spirit, you can tell timing. They have been working for years. They've been working for years. And so in their minds, the time has come. Let me show you something in the Bible. Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. We're talking symbolism. Let, let's actually read from verse 1 to verse 5 so that you can get it in context because I've dealt with these issues, all right? But now I wonder, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking some, some areas just to explain to you. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And I explained that to you. Next. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. A scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed, watch this now, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pears, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Look at verse 5. And upon her head, her forehead, was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I want you to look, look at this again. And upon her forehead was a name written, mystery. I said, what they're telling you with the, with the arch of Palmyra or arch of Baal, okay, that they've been transporting from city to city, they're telling you it's time They've been working on something. They expected to have moved in in 2016. Didn't happen. So they vowed 2020 was going to be the year. So in 2020, they moved in. And guess what? There you have it. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Now, what, what, is, what is this? What does this mean? Mystery. He says, Babylon the Great. Now, the word mystery is a Greek mysterion. And I want us to look at what the Strong's Concordance says it is. All right? The Strong's Concordance. What it tells us about this word that we just read. I'm going to read it to you. This is interesting. Listen to what it says. Mr. Rion says, to shut the mouth, a secret a mystery. Then it says, through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into religious rites. To shut the mouth through what? The idea of silence imposed by initiation into religious rites. This is what your mask is about. I hope you're understanding now. So when you're told to wear the mask, it is not about a virus. In fact, the manufacturer's instruction for several masks, including especially the professional masks sent out, it is clearly stated there, does not protect against COVID-19, against coronavirus, COVID-19. It is stated there. Question then, if it doesn't protect you against the virus, why are you wearing it? And why did they write it there? They wrote it to avoid suits, lawsuits. Because they knew it was a lie that it protected against the virus. It doesn't. It doesn't. In fact, I showed you that you're going to have health challenges by wearing the mask. You're going to have health problems, no doubt, by continually wearing the mask. So do they know? Well, 
Those that are into the cult know. The others are pretending. Those in the cult know this. They understand what is happening. What's going on is through the wearing of masks, the whole world is being forced into this global initiation. Under the Luciferian authority and the one world system that they hope to bring in. These are symbolisms. That's what the mask is about. Let me read something to you, which you can, you can, I mean, you, the things I'm sharing with you, they're very simple. You can find them yourself. For example, look up what masking is in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Listen, and this is written by Prof, uh, Professor Paul S. Wingert from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Listen to what he says. So he's not writing for church. He's not writing for, for Bible. Okay? Watch. He's a professor of art or was a professor of art history and archaeology, Columbia University, and author of Primitive Art, Its Traditions and Styles and Others. Here's what he says. Mask, a form of disguise or concealment, usually worn over or in front of the face to hide the identity of a person and by its own features to establish another being. I want you to notice what he says. It is not only to conceal uh, an identity, but to establish another identity. This is the purpose. This is the purpose. So in the spirit realm, these things are playing out. In the earth realm, when people are just acting. They think that everything is just normal. Oh, they just said we should do this. Oh, they just said we should do that. Listen, in the realm of the spirit, you don't have to know what is going on. All you have to do is just comply and it works for you or against you. I'll give an example in the Bible. When the children of Israel gathered... Or didn't gather, what God was looking at was whether or not they were following his instruction. I want you to understand this. So it wasn't just every gathering that meant that it was unto the Lord. It had to be according to what God instructed. Now look at this. On a certain day, the day of atonement, God said that the priest, on behalf of the people, should lay his hand on the goat, okay, on the scapegoat, and confess upon the scapegoat all the sins of the children of Israel. So, in the mind of God and in the realm of the spirit, all the sins of the people were transferred upon the goat. Did they have to know it? They didn't have to. It was done on their behalf. All they had to do was to comply with whatever other instruction their part was. This explanation, they didn't have to understand it. You see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in the spirit, it's about obedience. And that's why they tell you, obey. All you have to do is just do what we tell you. Because they understand the spiritual. And I told you before that these things are being run from the courts. No doubt. The symbolisms are there. And that's why many of the people who are behind this don't even have a, a clue what's going on. They do some stuff and then they go out angrily. They're not happy with what they did, but they did it anyway. Because evil spirits are leading them and causing them to do the things that they're doing. And this is why we have to pray and not just wait and think, well, you know, they can't just be that wicked. No, they can't just be that wicked. It's not, it's not in their hands. This is what I'm telling you. You have to look at the spiritual side of it and see what's going on. 
and the only ones on the face of the earth that have the power to alter these things is those who are using the name of Jesus Christ. Those who believe in that name. They're the only ones who can do it, who can change it. No one else can. No one else can. I told you one of the things, I, I told you several months ago in 2020, and then later on towards uh, the latter part of the year, they released documents in some countries. I read one to you from Canada. Okay? The plan to seize your assets, to destroy completely. I told you it was coming. They're going to destroy private property. So you can't own a house. You can't own a land. You can't own anything. You say, that's weird. Well, it's weird because those who are behind this whole thing are psychopaths. They are weird. So that's what they plan to do. Let me read you something. Just so you understand how far they've been working on this. If you've never received salvation, if you've never received Christ into your heart, if you've never experienced this life of Christ that I'm talking to you about, this is your moment. Say these words. Say, oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe he died to save me. I believe God raised him from the dead and he's alive today. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day. And by my faith in him, I receive eternal life into my heart, into my spirit. Thank you, Lord for saving my soul. I have eternal life now. I'm a child of God now. I am born again. Thank you, Lord. If you just said that prayer along with Pastor Chris, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God.